Amen. 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 It's a pleasure as always to extend a very warm welcome to everyone gathered here and joining online. A call to worship comes once again from a prayer handbook for feasts and festivals and is credited to Alan Riff. Praise God for this new day. Let praise resound to the God of life. In spite of trials, you, O oh God, have brought us to this place of space and freedom. Praise God for this new day. Let praise resound to the God of life. We gather just as we are, with our struggles and our hopes, our gifts and commitment, our longing for holy freedom. Praise God for this new day. Let praise resound to the God of life. We seek the presence of the one who has kept us among the living, who restores and renews, who seeks life for all. Praise God for this new day, let praise resound to the God of life. We'll now continue our worship by singing our first hymn, Vision Praise 5 to 8, we'll worship the King of Glory to above, and we'll sing the first and the last two verses. Thank you. 
let us hear the word of the Lord. The reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with a colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. God's word to the people of God. Thanks be to God. At the time of preparing for this reflection, the recent coronation was still very much surrounding us and in the headlines. It therefore seemed the perfect opportunity to reflect on Christ's kingship and in researching I came across a helpful work credited to a John Piper, Chancellor of a Christian College and Seminary. Christ the King is a title of Jesus, referring to the idea of the Kingdom of God where Jesus is described as sitting at the right hand of God. Many Christian denominations consider the kingly office of Jesus as one of the threefold offices he holds prophet, priest and king. In the triumphal entry to Jerusalem, we heard in our gospel reading earlier and in afterwards, Jesus declares his kingship in four different ways. As Jesus was a Jew and came to fulfil Jewish prophecy and promises of the coming Messiah, we are all Jewish. However, Jesus knows that he is king of all nations, not just Israel. His kingship is not tribal or national, but international and global. Keep in mind the ending of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 18 to 19. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Number one, Jesus declared his kingship by riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Why did Jesus choose to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey? He had never done so before. Kings traditionally celebrated victory by returning home mounted on a magnificent war horse. Jesus very intentionally acted out the fulfilment of the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden, claiming his kingship. In this he also declares his kingship to be humble, bringing salvation as both Jewish and global, and invites us to receive it. Two, Jesus declared his kingship through the clearing of the temple. Following the verses we heard in our gospel reading, Jesus then goes on to clear the temple. This meek, gentle, lowly, saviour king doesn't lack passion for his father's glory. In explanation of what he is doing, Jesus quotes Isaiah. And he said to them, it is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a robber's den. There are two significant things to note in this action and quote Jesus used. One is Isaiah writes in the context of the coming kingdom of God. So Jesus is putting himself in the place of the coming king. The context again is not just Jewish, but global. Isaiah 56, verses 6 to 8. Also the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, even those that I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. For my house will be called a house. 
house of prayer for all people. The Lord God, who gathers and disperse, the dispersed of Israel, declares, Yet others I will gather to them, to those already gathered. In this use of prophetic words in the temple, Jesus' choices underline the coming, his coming on a donkey as a king, and his kingship and kingdom as for all people. Jesus is eager to open his father's house to all for prayer. Jesus declares his kingship through his works of healing. Following the clearing of the temple, Matthew's gospel continues in verse 14. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. What an amazing effect and impact this would have had. A demonstration in the most public place in Jerusalem, but of what? In Isaiah 35, the prophet uses these words to describe the kingship of the coming Messiah. Take courage, fear not, the recompense of God will come, but he will save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be, will be opened, and the lame will leap like a deer. So Jesus has declared his kingship as lowly, gentle and patient by his coming in a donkey, by his clearing of his father's house to make it a house of prayer for all nations, and in his healing of the blind and the lame to show what his kingship is now in part and will be fully in the age to come. It is not just a kingship over other kings, but over disease and all nature. When he comes again, we will not only be saved, but whole, absolutely whole. Jesus declares his kingship and his reaction to the children and the crowds. The crowds are described in our gospel reading earlier as spreading their cloaks on the road in front of Jesus. A, refer a reference back to 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 13, and what was done when kings were crowned in the Old Testament. The children said, Hosanna to the king of David, meaning the king is here, recognising what the children are saying and what the crowds have been doing, the chief priests become angry, not understanding why Jesus is leaving this unchallenged, and question him, do you know what these children are saying and the crowds are doing? He answers with a quote from Psalm 8, have you never read, out of the mouths of infants and nursing babes, you have prepared praise for yourself. Jesus receives the praises of little children and the crowds, explaining it, by quoting a psalm where children are praising God. Jesus not only heard it, he planned it, received it gladly, as he does our own praises 2,000 odd years later, and as we gather together just now. The king has come and will come again, but his kingship will look very different. Let's hear a description of it from John in the final book of the Bible. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, white horse, and he who sat in it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he was a name, has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, and the armies with which are in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it he will strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Revelations 19 verses 11 to 16. But until he comes again, the most wonderful thing about Jesus' kingdom that because he chose to die, taking the burden of all our sins on himself, we live in a time of salvation and grace where it saves me, you, and all who will believe and accept God's free gift of salvation. We'll now continue our worship by singing Wish and Praise 109, Count Him with Many Crowns.
come before you, asking that we would hear our intercessory prayers. For the world, Lord, made perfect by you, but marred by humankind, spoiled by climate change, endangering both human and the animal kingdom, and destroying the balance of the natural world. A world where wars and oppression are ravaging every continent, and where the distribution of Earth's abundant resources are unfairly divided. Father, forgive us. For the Church, Lord, worldwide, nationally and locally, we ask your blessing for all who work and witness for you, praying for safety and well-being for our brothers and sisters who work in dangerous places and situations for the sake of the Gospel. We ask your blessing on next week's General Assembly and pray that your Holy Spirit will guide the proceedings and decisions that will be made so that your will be done and your name be glorified. We pray for our Minister Drew and his family, our Session Clerk Joanne, Elaine our Treasurer, members of the Session and teachers and children in the Sunday School. Father, we pray for our community, giving thanks for those who help keep us safe, for those who provide environmental services, those who work for the NHS, and those who provide caring services to the frail and elderly in their own homes and also in our two local nursing homes. We bring before you the folks suffering from hardships of any kind, whether health, financial, relationship or addiction issues, and we humbly ask that you would aid them in their need. Thank you, Lord, for showing us how much you love us by sending your Son, Jesus, to be our Saviour and Redeemer, and in whose precious name we pray. Amen. Now continue your worship by singing our final hymn, Vision Praise 656, The Lord is King.
and as always, not least, that each of you joined us here this morning and online. And we'll now finish our time of worship by saying together our praise. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain the whole.